Marcus Garvey, also known as the Negro Moses of the black people. Marcus Mosiah Garvey, 1887 to 1940, he was a Jamaican political activist, a black nationalist, a pan-Africanist, a trade unionist, a journalist, a publisher, a businessman, an orator, and the founder and first president general of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, UNIA ACL, commonly known as UNIA, through which he declared himself as the provisional president of Africa. His ideas and policies came to be known as Garveyism. Garvey's early education was modest. He left school at the age of 14, worked as a printer, joined Jamaican nationalist organizations, toured Central America, and spent time in London, but he displayed a keen interest in books and learning from a young age. Despite facing financial constraints, Garvey became an avid reader and developed a passion for literature, history, and philosophy, laying the intellectual foundation for his future endeavors. Garvey prepared him as a public speaker by enrolling in elocution lessons under the radical journalist Joseph Robert Love, who he regarded as a mentor. With Garvey's enhanced skill at speaking in a standard English manner, he entered several public speaking competitions. On racial discrimination in Jamaica, Garvey said that some of his childhood friends were whites, but as they grew older, they distanced themselves from him. He later recalled that his close childhood friend was a white girl. We were two innocent fools who never dreamed of a race feeling and problems. In London, he worked for various publishers and immersed himself in the city's intellectual and political circles. Inspired by the works of Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois, he began formulating ideas on racial pride, self-determination, and the need for a unified global movement among people of African descent. In 1914, Garvey established the Universal Negro Improvement Association, UNIA, in Jamaica. The organization aimed to uplift people of African descent through education, economic self-sufficiency, and the promotion of pride in African heritage. The UNIA later expanded its reach, establishing branches in the United States and other countries. Garvey's global vision led him to travel extensively. In 1916, he moved to the United States and established the UNIA branch in New York City, Harlem District, in May 1917. He declared membership open to anyone of Negro blood and African ancestry, who could pay the 25 cents per month membership fee. He emphasized unity between Africans and the African in diaspora and campaigned for an end to European colonial rule in Africa and advocated for the political unification of the continent. He envisioned a unified Africa as a one-party state governed by himself that would enact laws to ensure black racial purity. While in the United States, he witnessed the harsh realities of racial segregation. This experience fueled his commitment to advocating for the rights and empowerment of black people on international scale all over the world. Although Garvey never visited Africa himself, he was committed to the Back to Africa movement, arguing that part of the diaspora should migrate to Africa and establish themselves first. He thought of these people as the experts, professional engineers, doctors, teachers, etc., etc., who can put the systems and institutions in place. But his critics say he knew little about the continent and its culture. Hence, he speaks from ignorance. In October 1919, Garvey survived assassination attempt by George Tyler, a part-time vendor of the Negro World newspaper, at the UNIA office. Garveyism became increasingly popular, and the UNIA grew in membership and remains the largest movement for African descendants in history. His black separatist views and his relationship with white racists, like the Ku Klux Klan, KKK in the interest of advancing their shared goal of racial separatism, caused a division between Garvey and other prominent African-American civil rights activists, such as W.E.B. Du Bois, who promoted racial integration with a group known as National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NEAACP, while Garvey and his Unaya believed that black people needed to be financially independent from white-dominated societies. 
Economically, Garvey supported capitalism, stating that capitalism is necessary for the progress of the world, and those who unreasonably and wantonly oppose it or fight against it are enemies of human advancement. Garvey admired Booker T. Washington's economic endeavors, but criticized his focus on individualism. Garvey believed that African-American interests would best be advanced if businesses included collective decision-making and group profit-sharing. He launched various businesses in the U.S. to empower the Africans, such as the Negro Factories Corporation, Negro World Newspaper, the Daily Negro Times, as well as the Black Star Line Shipping Company. One of Marcus Garvey's most ambitious projects was the creation of the Black Star Line, to facilitate trade between black communities globally, providing economic opportunities, fostering solidarity, and forge a link between North America and Africa as well as facilitate African-American migration to Liberia. Unfortunately, financial mismanagement and legal issues led to the downfall of the Black Star Line, resulting in a setback for Garvey's vision. In 1923, Marcus Garvey, was convicted of mail fraud for selling the company's stock, and he was convicted and imprisoned in the United States Penitentiary in Atlanta for nearly two years. However, many social commentators have argued that the trial was politically motivated. His sentence was eventually commuted by the 30th U.S. President Calvin Coolidge. Among the black groupings, there were tensions and acrimonious relationship between UNIA and the NAACP, Garvey was dismissive of the NAACP leader W.E.B. Du Bois and in one issue of the Negro World newspaper called him a reactionary under the pay of white men. Du Bois generally tried to ignore Garvey, regarding him as a demagogue. However, in 1923, Du Bois described Marcus Garvey as a little fat black man, ugly but with intelligent eyes and big head. In 1924, a historian, Colin Grant, has suggested that the two hated each other. Marcus Garvey faced numerous challenges, including government scrutiny and internal conflicts within the UNIA. In August 1920, UNIA organized the first international conference of the Negro peoples in Harlem. This parade was attended by Gabriel Johnson, the mayor of Monrovia from Liberia at the time. At the conference, UNIA delegates declared Garvey to be the provisional president of Africa, charged with heading a government in exile that could take power in the Africa when European colonial rule ended via decolonization. This infuriated some of the freedom fighters back in Africa. On religion, this what Garvey said, whilst our God has no color, yet it is human to see everything through one's own spectacles, and since the white people have seen their God through white spectacles, we have only now started out, late though it be, to see our God through our own spectacles. Different writers have different perceptions about Garvey. In 1955, Cronon stated that while Garvey achieved little in the way of permanent improvement for black people, he awakened fires of Negro nationalism that is yet to be extinguished. In Cronon's view, Garvey was important because he gave African descent or peoples a new feeling of collective pride and a sense of individual worth. Though a polarizing figure, Garvey was both revered and reviled, Grant noted that views on him largely divided between two camps. One camp portrayed him as a charlatan, and the other camp portrayed him as a saint. In 2008, American writer ta Coates described Garvey as the patron saint of the black nationalist movement. Also, another scholar of African-American studies, Molefi Keita Sante, included Garvey, on his 2002 and 2008 list of 100 Greatest African Americans. Marcus Garvey's legacy is multifaceted. His emphasis on black pride, self-reliance, and global unity laid the foundation for later civil rights movements. His ideas influenced leaders like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, Ho Chi Minh of Vietnam, and many others across the globe, as well as the development of the Rastafari movement. The Black Star Line's failure, 
while a setback symbolizes the challenges faced by those striving for economic empowerment within marginalized communities. In 1927, Marcus Garvey was deported from the U.S. to Jamaica. Although he continued his activism, the UNIA declined, and he faced financial difficulties and he returned to the United Kingdom, where lived and worked until he passed away in June 1940 at the age of 52 in London, leaving a complex legacy. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Bye.